the edges on the uh, flap spars. These are the blanks. And uh, I'm going to clean them up, sand the tops, remove all the scratches out of them, and get them all the way ready to paint before I bend them. It's a whole lot easier to do all that before they're bent. It's ready to go. It's all been prepped and can be marked out and bent. Since my bender is a rustic sort of contraption that I more or less put together from what I had, the surfaces are not super smooth and rather than try to polish a whole bunch of steel and everything, I did clean it up. I put contact paper on the parts before I bend them. Works great. You don't mar them up and uh, then you can re remove it and use it on another piece. So now I'll just take and cut another piece and put it on the other side. And like I said, it's just to keep the bender from marring up the surface. So I made up this nice little 12 degree angle with a 3D printer so that I could check this. So I got a little more to go. And I've got one for 3 degrees also, which is the other side. So now it's pretty acceptable 12 degrees. Alright, so with this one bent, I'll just pull this contact paper off now. It's a lot better than pulling the plastic that comes with the aluminum off, that's for sure. And transfer it over to this blank and then bend it. So here's the two flat spars ready to go. Fit seems pretty good on the ribs. Not bad at all. So next I'll start laying out the uh, rib locations, hole locations, and all that good stuff. All right, so I've laid out the two spars um, so that both three degree angles are together right now. And this is the right root, this is the left root on this end. And as you can see, I laid out all the hole locations, all the rib locations, the nose locations. And the next thing I'm gonna do is drill the holes, the light weighting holes. So I pilot drilled all the light weighting holes. So now I'm going to open them up to the same size as the, the drill bit in my hole cutter. So now I'm starting to drill the light weighting holes. So everything's laid out on the spar. I've already drilled a hole the same size as the pilot for this hole cutter. Put a block here and I'm using the mill, I put a block in the vise, drill, drilled the pilot, and I can just set it up here. Bring the pilot in. So, now, dealing with these hole cutters, <clears throat> I don't do a lot of sheet metal big holes, so I invested a whopping 10 bucks or so on this from discount tool place and these things can be frustrating as hell but there's some things you can do to make your life better so one thing I did is I'm running it backwards because I don't want the pilot drill to actually wallow out the hole in the wood or cut any more metal away I want it to just align it to the center to do that I turn the tool around the other direction I also sharpen the cutting tool 
and brought it to a fine tip. They, they don't normally come that way, but, but who knows? I mean, they're kind of random. The other thing is you need a really good way to clamp your material. I like using a big block like this because it helps flatten out the material. If you don't do that, the material is going to be concave somewhat. And when you start cutting, it'll hit in one place and not in another. And it'll break through in one place and it tends to want to grab and all the kind of stuff that can make you really piss you off. So anyhow, found this works really well. I'm going to use the Z to bring the tool, uh, the table up into the tool so I can do it really slow because that's the other thing is to run it slow and bring it up slow. You can do the same thing on a drill press. You can use the table um, raise and lower to, to bring it up really slow. And then it just goes through without any of the headaches. Okay, so I'm attaching the nose ribs, so it's pretty easy. I just went to the layout lines that I have and marked out my rivet locations, which I 3D printed a little right angle to get in here and do these lines, and then I just marked on the edge where I wanted the rivets so I could reproduce it real easy. Center punch them all. Bring it over and drill them all. So I need a mark on the other side to tell me where the lip ribs should be located. So that's going to be one quarter inch off this hole. Now I take this pieces of scrap pieces of thirty two thousandths and clamp them on here. So that when I put the rib in, it'll center it up. Now I can turn it over and put the rib in place. So I'm going to take the rib and put it in here between. Line it up on that line. and clamp it. So now I can flip it over. Drill. And get this out of my way. Drill this one. Just take a quick look to make sure things haven't moved. Still looks correct.
So here we go. <clears throat> Both flaps with all their nose roots. Install. So now I'm going to make some uh, attach angles and start putting ribs on. So I need a bunch of these half by half attachment angles for the ribs here. So it's a good opportunity to use up some of the scrap that came from lightweighting holes and such. So I'm working on these attachment angles. So I blanked them out, deburred them. And now I'm going to drill holes for the one side. So the one side the ribs will get attached to, and I can drill the rib to these holes. The other side has to be drilled to the spar, so I'll have to leave it blank. But as many operations as I can do before they go on the wing, the easier it is. So I'm installing the uh, attachment angles for the ribs and this uh, station already has a nose rib on. So I'm going to take that nose rib out. The attach angle I've already put a line down the center of the, uh, the flange on this side and I've marked which direction the rib is supposed to locate or uh, face. So this is a, a rib and it will face this direction. So the angle goes on this way. So all I have to do is turn this over. And I'm going to line up the center line there. Kind of close. Get it close to center. And I'm going to use this clamp hold it in place while I drill the first hole and then I'll click that one and drill the rest. Look underneath to see that we're reasonably centered and we are. So I can go ahead and drill the first hole. I'm going to turn it over, check square, square is good, I will drill the rest of these. going to put it all back together. So the Clico is actually going to come in from the bottom. that one's done and the rib can go on there starting on the skins for the flap so the first thing I'm going to do here is measure the distance because I'm going to do four separate pieces I'm not doing one long one so I just measure on both sides down here at the spar what my distance is 
for this bay, and I'll do this one, that one, and that one. And then I'll set up to cut those on the router. So there's one of the flat nose pieces. And one thing I've done too is right here on the edge, and this is probably hard to see, it's a little nick. And so I put the layout lines for bending on here just by using the, putting a little dimple there. So I have all four nose uh, covers here blanked out. And the next thing I need to do is clean them up, sand them, prep them for paint, and then I'll bend them. So to bend these, um, basically this is a 45, this is a 45, and I made that one a 45. And then the rest of it will just bend it around the rib, as, we'll bring it down with the rivets. So here's a test piece I did, and it fits pretty well. So it's just 45 degree, a 45 degree, and like I said, this one, then it'll just nicely wrap around the nose with the rivets. So here's the one I just bent, and it looks good. So there's both uh, flaps with their uh, nose skin bent, and next up I'll probably start attaching it.